Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to see how easy it is to add vignettes and grain effects to our images. The first method is to use the vignetting slider in the lens correction panel. This slider was initially designed to remove vignetting caused by lens distortion, but it can be used to decrease or increase the amount of vignetting in any image. It does a great job of simulating an in-camera vignette effect. If, however, I select the crop tool and I need to crop the image, then the vignette will appear uneven because it always affects the entire photo. All right, let me reset the crop and reset the vignetting slider. Now the second method would be to use the effects panel. The primary benefit being that the vignette settings are applied to the image after cropping and they would be updated if the crop is altered. There are three post crop vignette styles. The highlight priority enables highlight recovery in the vignette but it can lead to color shifts in darkened areas of a photo. It'll work well on photos with bright areas around the edges, such as bright specular highlights, and it behaves more like a traditional exposure burn in the darkroom. The color priority minimizes the color shifts in the darkened areas of a photo, but it doesn't perform the highlight recovery. Paint overlay is similar to an overlay of black and white paint, it can be helpful when the edges in an image need to be darkened or lightened by the same amount, like in a high key image. For this image though, I'm gonna choose the highlight priority. Moving the amount slider to the left will create a dark vignette, dragging it to the right will lighten it. I'll make a drastic change to make sure that we can clearly see what the other sliders do. We can use the midpoint slider to reposition the vignette inwards towards the center or outwards towards the edge of the image. We can use the roundness slider to shape the vignette from rectangular to elliptical. And we can use the feather slider to either harden or soften the edge of a vignette. All right, let's double click to reset all of the sliders. And then let's set the vignette to subtly darken the edge. I'll bring the midpoint inwards, make the shape more elliptical, and then soften the edges. We can use the highlight slider to reintroduce contrast in the highlights. We can really see the effect of the slider where the vignetting is applied over the bright areas of the sky. All right, let's double click to reset all of the sliders. All right, for the third method, I'll click the masking icon and select the radial gradient, or we can use the keyboard shortcut Shift plus M. Now we could click and drag out the radial gradient in the image area, but if you want the radial gradient to fit the entire visible image area, hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and then double click in the image area. One of the advantages is that we can create an off-center vignette using the radial gradient. I'll use the on-screen controls to reposition the gradient as well as resize it. We can position our cursor outside of the gradient and then we can rotate it. And we can drag the red dot to change the feather or we can use the feather slider to adjust the visual fall off of the vignette. By default, the interior of the radial gradient will be affected. We can click to invert it or we can tap the apostrophe key to toggle the invert option. Now we can use any of the masking adjustments for now, I'll simply decrease exposure, but you could change any of these additional sliders. You can also combine the radial gradient with other masking tools. To remove the effect of the radial gradient from the rock, I'll choose Subtract, and then select the brush and paint over the rock. So now the radial gradient is affecting this area overlaid in red, while the brush subtracts this area, and when the components are combined, they result in this mask to selectively show the vignette adjustment. We can also add multiple radial gradients to an image. I'll click the plus and then choose radial gradient and then drag out a radial gradient over the rock face. Then I'll increase the exposure to add a bit of light to the area. Then we can use the eye icon to toggle the visibility of the adjustment. So that's without and then with. All right, let's return to the effects panel to add grain to the image. I'll zoom in to 100% to see the effects of the grain sliders more accurately. Then I'll use the amount slider to control how much grain we add, the size slider to control how small or how large the grain appears, and then use the roughness slider to determine whether the grain looks sharp or rougher and more blotchy. We can also add grain to selective areas using masking. Excellent, I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.